Hello, my resin monkeys. The bitch is back. What? You thought I was gonna quit YouTube all because of some goddamn toxic doll stands that didn't wanna listen to reason and stop being so goddamn toxic? That I would wallow in my own self-pity because YouTube is miscategorizing my videos and I can't do anything about it? E a little bit. But no, because honestly, <laughs> I was just taking a break. Uh, the last video was very mentally tiring. And well, it happened to coincide that I came back with a new video uh, right upon the release of a certain little movie that has been in the making for the last 10 years. I never really intended to time it this way. It just happened to coincide. I swear I didn't know that the movie was even gonna be on Prime for everybody outside Japan. And I basically realized that like two days before it went live. And of course, I'm talking about an Ava figure, particularly Asuka. Now, Asuka and I don't have the greatest relationship. In fact, I would say that about Ray too. I've had this figure for a while now, just laying around, didn't really intend on painting it ever. Uh, it was pre-worked by a friend of mine, so I was like, eh? But I have had a lot of people ask me for a tutorial on how to create a seamless connection. And by seamless, I mean making two pieces look like one. This happens a lot where two pieces are divided on nude figures or not even nude figures, maybe just uh, figures that because of how they were casted, they needed to be separated, but they're supposed to look like one. For example, limbs. So since this angel Asuka has basically all her limbs divided and need to be together and to look like one, I decided to just take her out and show you guys how to do it. Okay, I understand that this is a very beloved series, so I will refrain from saying anything negative about Ray or Asuka, because I'm pretty sure the Ava fans are gonna probably crucify me just like Lilith. Because of course, saying something negative about the majority's best girl is sacrilege. As an anime fan, I know that anybody saying even something remotely negative about a best girl of any series, people will cut you. With that, this video is gonna be just like any other watch me paint video, but with the added included bonus of a tutorial on showing you how to do this. So FYI, we're gonna skip initial cleaning and initial seam line putty. We're gonna jump right into pinning. When working on a kit that needs seamless connections, or in this case, making two pieces look like one, you need to prep the pieces as best as you can. This means that you need to make all the connecting parts as even as possible. This kit is an old one and it doesn't have great casting. So the connections areas kind of look like they're pinched. So I need to putty this area on both sides of the connection. And for this to work out, <laughs> I need to make a really good filling work on each piece. Like always, I make sure to putty all the pieces and sand down those areas to make them as even as possible and with minimal gaps on the surface to prepare for the paint job. I hold on to this storm cause I need to be swept away, swept away. I, I'm cornered. Remember that when working with putty, you need to make sure to apply Vaseline on the side where you don't want it to stick to. And as a result, I'll be doing this several times during the prep.
And to do that, I use a variety of sanders. Because honestly, hand sanding is tedious as fuck, and I don't have patience for that anymore. I blame technology for that. For the same reason that I prefer to go to the gym instead of working out at home, I rely on machines to make my job easier. Links to all these sanders are in the description box below. Once all that is done, it's time to apply your first layer of primer. <sighs> hey. Hey. Oh, you're done with prep? <laughs> yeah, I just hope I did a good enough job to, you know, Paint flowing now. That looks amazing! Ah! So, what are you waiting for? Let's see a paint it. Forget that one too. <laughs> that part too. You're starting to piss me off. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I get it. Okay, prep is not over. I get it. Uh, shut up. Hey. Hey. What now? I love you! You know, the way I see it, primer is kind of like the BFF that you love so much. Because they cheer on you and they bring you up, but they can also be huge assholes while pointing out all your mistakes. Back to sanding. This time I make sure to polish and sand all those leftover areas so I can finally apply a second layer of primer and paint the bitch.
To start painting, I honestly recommend priming with an airbrush with either white or flesh color, depending on the paint and technique you want to use. Unfortunately, I haven't had a lot of luck using the clear paint method when doing kits like these because the new layers of clear paint will effectively make the surrounding areas darker and I honestly don't want that. So I'll be using a mix of both with Mr. Hobby Lashivas. But again, you can use Gaia Notes flesh colors if you're not comfortable using what I am right now. At this point, I make sure to shade almost all of the areas, except for the areas where I will bond those connections. Asuka has always been depicted with a mix of an orangey brown for her hair. I saw lots of pre-painted figures of her and illustrations and nobody seems to be on the same goddamn page. So I'm going to use a mix of orange as a base color and use browns to shade along with clear brown to finish everything off. And just in case you didn't know, brown is actually a very, very dark orange. So there you have it. Again, I make sure to just pastel shade those details on almost all her body, except for the joining areas as those will be shaded later. The wings will have a pink shade to them, but I will also be adding some pearl white to make them look kinda 
ethereal because, um, uh, angel? And if you've seen the last movie, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Okay, so it's tutorial time. This is how you proceed to making pieces look like a single one. You will need one of these fine engraving bits like this one. It's kind of important, so try and get it if you can. Some kits have a certain order to how to connect its pieces. Some might get in the way of gluing the others, so you need to really think it through. So I will start with the left arm since it will not get in the way of the leg. So at this point, I add a drop of glue to the pin, connect it and pray, I mean, get your Dremel and carefully make a groove along the connection. Now I'm sure some of you are going, but Leona, you said that you needed to eliminate that in the prep. Why are you doing the opposite now? Short answer, you need to do this so that you can apply the filler putty into that crevice so that it has a deeper area to stick to. Also because you have a control over the crevice size. Long answer, keep watching the damn video. For the filler, I like to use light curing putty from Tamiya. But if you don't have that, you can always use CA glue with talcum powder. When using light curing putty, I do need to do this in darkness, since you know, if light touches the putty, it will cure in a matter of seconds. I need to do this and then place it below a light source. It will leave an inhibition layer behind, so just be sure to get some alcohol and clean it up. Then proceed to sand as carefully as possible and try to sand as small of an area as possible to avoid touching zones not intended to be repainted. And before I attach the leg, I realized that the painting of the eyes in the end would be very difficult. <laughs> with the entire body assembled. So I'm gonna pause here and paint them at this stage before I do anything else. And now let me show you how Asuka was supposed to really look like with her eyes painted the way I normally do instead of using watercolor pencils like I did in the last video.
With the eyes painted, now I can realize a fantasy that I've had ever since I saw Ava in the early 2000s. <laughs> well, now with painting, I'm masking off any immediate areas that might get overspray, so I make sure to avoid this using saran wrap. I only want this small area repainted, not the entire arm and side boob. Apply your primer, paint your base color, and finish off with shadings and pastels. Remember to seal and move on to the next piece to be connected. And in this case, I went with the left leg. Again, try to not over sand more than you need on the area of the connection. Rinse and repeat for each and every piece that needs to be connected. You basically have to do this one limb at a time. The inside of the legs can't really be reached, so there will be very small visible connections, but only if you really look at it from above at an angle, which honestly, it's not a big deal. This method will help you into getting those parts to look like one. Disclaimer, it's not 100% perfect, but it's better than looking at all those horrible line connections on a nude figure, am I right? Now, we don't want Asuka tumbling down, so I decided to create a base for her. I honestly just decided to design one on Tinkercad and print it out. It did kind of fail, but I'd rather fix it with putty than have to wait another 15 hours for a new copy to print. Ain't nobody got time for that! Obviously, layer lines are still kind of a small issue, so I make sure to sand off the surface to make it as smooth as possible. <laughs> I can't forget to add my signature in there. All artists do this. I swear it's not something narcissistic. A little peel point for you. Some round thingies so that the base will not get scratched on the bottom. And detail painting. And with that, we're done.
congratulations, you have reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this watch me paint slash bonus tutorial video on how to do this shit. I also want to announce that I have opened a new sales section on my website. If you're interested in one of the figures that I make in my videos, you might want to see if you can snag a kit painted by me. Not all the figures that I paint will be up for sale, but those that will, be sure to check out my website after each video. You know, I kind of have to make it hard for you guys, you know, just make you work for it just a little bit. Think of it as a scavenger hunt. <laughs> also, I hope that if you're an Ava fan, you've had the chance to watch the last movie, Thrice Upon a Time. I honestly can only say that I used to be a big fan of Evangelion back in the early 2000s when I saw it for the first time, but I was confused for the most part at the endings of the series and the movies. And um, also the fact that I started to dislike Rey and Asuka a lot because every year at Wonderfest, they would saturate the event with constant figures of both of these characters. When I actually wanted to see artists do, you know, something different from characters that I really liked. So this is where my disdain for these two characters came from. But I hate to admit this, but goddamn Hidakiano managed to do something that I thought was not going to be possible. And yeah, that was basically liking these characters again after I saw the last movie. The ending had me very satisfied <laughs> and not confused at all. Well, just a, there are a few questions here and there that I'm like, what? But hey, for the most part, I'm very satisfied with that and finally glad that I understood it. <laughs> Remember that I also have my live streams on Twitch every Mondays for English and every Thursdays for Spanish. I just recently finished this edit live <laughs> on the English stream. You should definitely consider watching me on Twitch because we have a lot of fun times there. <laughs> ah, so much shit posting and shit talking and talking about other stuff that Sometimes there's nothing to do with the actual figure, but hey, they have a good time. And since I finished that in, now my followers voted for me to paint this Chi, which I've had in my collection for a while too. I just recently started working on her. And uh, yeah, like I said, we have a really good time. And and yeah, we, we've been getting sent to horny jail <laughs> recently, uh, but hey, it's all good and fun. Mondays at 5.30 p.m. Pacific Time and Thursdays at 6 o'clock Pacific Time. And if you really want to see some spicy, not safe for work, not safe for YouTube content, I invite you to check out my Patreon. Where I'm doing the Lord's work in quenching the thirst of very, very horny ladies and gentlemen. Believe it or not, I don't judge. Because I'm painting Aoba from Dramatical Murder with all the details and trimmings that you can imagine. So consider becoming one of my patrons and let me quench your thirst. You know, it's a good thing I didn't open an OnlyFans account for my work. I would probably be crying right now. Hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and remember to tickle that bell icon for all notifications for future videos on this channel. The next video might, might take a while to get here because it's gonna be the one and only Princess Mercury. So yeah, wait for that one. It's gonna be good. Until next time, my risen monkeys. Aw, don't cry. You know Evangelion was going to finish one way or another. Here, here, let, let me wipe out those tears. Oh, poor baby. <laughs>